Good morning and a very warm welcome to our service which is being streamed to you this morning because many of us are in isolation. We may be in family groups or we may be on our own but none of us are alone. God is with each and every one of us. As the psalmist put it, where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in the world of the dead, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and settle at the farthest limits of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me and your right hand shall hold me fast. God is with us, a generous and giving God in his grace. This morning, the theme of our service will be petition, thinking about how and what we ask God for. So let's start our service with a short prayer. Loving Heavenly Father, we come in virtual fellowship through your spirit to worship and to praise you for your great generosity. Send your spirit that we may do so with all our hearts and minds. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. on those things that we would like to bring before God. And we say together, Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned 
in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. May Almighty God, who sent his Son into the world to save sinners, bring you his pardon and peace, now and forever. Amen. Matthew 7 verses 7 to 12 Ask, seek, knock. Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives. The one who seeks finds. And the one who knocks the door will be opened. Which of you, if your son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or, if he asks for a fish, will give him a snake. If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him? So in everything, do to others what you would have them do to you. For this sums up the law and the prophets. This is the word of the Lord. Hello and a warm welcome to St John's Online. If you have been following the services in the last two weeks then you know that we started with the theme on praying and um, we looked at different topics on prayer. The first week we looked at why pray um, and that's simply because the disciples asking the Lord Jesus teach us how to pray and we looked not just why but also to whom do we pray. And then last week we look at adoration. We had an interview with Kirsty and we asked her her experience on adoration, but also in reflection of the Lord's Prayer that Jesus starts the prayer with, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, holy is your name. He starts with worship. This week we're going to look at petition and in a moment I will interview Joelle and ask us her experience about petition. Um, A petition is simply asking, uh, asking very specifically. Uh, you might recognize the word when you go into um, write a particular petition towards an organization or perhaps towards the government and you are very specific about your request. So in our Bible reading it says that when we are able and willing and are keen to give good gifts to our children, how much more will our Heavenly Father give us good gifts when we ask Him? So prayer is to the Father, but it is also through the Son. And I want you to look at this little video clip that the Alpha Course produced when they did their session on prayer. And it is very profound, but it gives a very good example that our prayer is to the Father, but also through the Son. Prayer is to the Father, the creator and sustainer of everything, but it's also through the Son. Through Jesus' death on the cross, the partition, the barrier of sin has been removed and we have access to God. It's through Jesus the Son that we have access to God the Father. A young soldier fighting for the Union Army in the American Civil War lost both his father and his brother in the fighting. He needed to return to his family's home and help his sister and elderly mother with the spring planting on their farm. And so he went to Washington DC to ask the president for exemption from military service. When he arrived in Washington, he walked straight up to the doors of the White House and asked to speak directly with the president. A young official standing guard told him, you can't see the president. The president's far too busy to see you. Get back out there and fight like you're supposed to. So the young soldier left the White House, not knowing how he would break the bad news to his family. 
As he was sitting on a nearby park bench, a young boy came up to him and said, Why are you so unhappy? What's wrong? The soldier looked at the boy and began to pour out his heart. He told the child that since his father and brother had been killed, he was the only man left in his family. He was desperately needed back at the farm and the only person who could make it possible was the president himself. The little boy said simply, come with me. Taking him by the hand, the boy led the soldier back around to the White House. They walked through the back door, past the guards, past the generals, past the high-ranking government officials until they got to the president's office. The little boy didn't even knock on the door. He just opened it and walked in. There, standing behind the desk, studying battle plans with the Secretary of State was President Abraham Lincoln. The president looked up and said, Oh, what can I do for you, Tad? The little boy replied, Dad, this man needs to talk to you. Our father. He's inviting us to share in the relationship he has with the father. Joel, thank you so much for being here on Zoom and um, to join us for this interview, this session on prayer. Um, and this week's theme it's petition and before i'm asking you a question about this um i would like to ask you uh, i met you when i started at st john's and i've not been that long at st john's nearly two years um how long have you been part of the st john's church community here in cop um so i've been attending the church for probably about six or seven years right. um and probably the last four years i've been a bit more involved in the children's church yeah. And then maybe the last 18 months, so I've been a bit more involved in the 11 o'clock service. Okay, nice. Petition is a type of prayer that I find the most easy to do. Um, I know that we've talked about in the prayer course di different parts of praying, like adoration and petition. Um, but I find that uh, petition is what comes most naturally to me. And, and are you doing that daily? Are you doing it on set times or is it something you do? When I think it's different? something probably I do in difficult times, difficult times for myself or difficult times for other people. Um, but also, yes, not always daily, but when I, when I do pray, then I do um, particularly focus on petition. Um, also, it might not be a specific time that I'm praying at home on my own. It might be when I'm walking around the village, particularly now when you're walking a lot more, walking around the village or running, um, then people might come into my head and then I would pray about them. Or if I was walking past the house, I would pray about them, lift them up to God um, and ask for specific things, perhaps if they're not well um, or they're having financial struggles or relationship struggles, that might be something that I would pray about. And have, you... and have you always prayed to God uh, when you were young or is it something you started to do recently? Um, no, I wouldn't say all, I always have. I think um, probably like they say in the prayer course, I think everybody, even if they're not a Christian, they prayed at some point, particularly in sort of traumatic circumstances. But it's probably been in the last 10 years or so where I've prayed a lot more um, yeah. because of specific, um, quite tragic circumstances in my own life. Yeah. Um, I've definitely reached out to God more and found actually when I've been going through a really difficult time to know that people are praying for me has really given me comfort. Yeah. So I, I like to think that I can do that for other people as well. And then, do you feel um, on those moments that, that you are closer to God, or do you feel sometimes that you that God hears you when you pray? Absolutely, I do. Yeah, absolutely. I feel that um, God is a closer to me, and I always pray. If I'm praying for a particular person, say I was praying for you, for instance, I would say, um, "Holy Spirit, please surround Wim." So I, I would really pray that the Holy Spirit would come and be next to them yeah. and in doing that that makes me feel closer to um, our father as well yeah and uh, is there one particular example that you're able to share 
of a of an event in the past that you prayed very specifically and that you felt that God God was was responding to that maybe not in a way that you expected it to be um yeah I can say one particularly for myself which um I've shared before um it it was a very tragic circumstances so I lost my daughter about 10 years ago and I can remember praying uh, the Lord's Prayer because yeah. it was the only prayer that I could think of yeah. and I, I prayed that she would survive and unfortunately she didn't and I really thought that God didn't hear me yeah. but he did hear me because the next day when I went home without her a minister from the church that I got married in arrived on our doorstep the very next day to pray for us so I although he didn't answer the prayer that I wanted in the way that I wanted yeah. I feel that he heard me and he answered it what would you suggest to people who um who find it difficult last week when we interviewed Kirsty um she was saying how she found it almost simpler to do adoration to 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 be in that conversation we've got into to to just say how amazing God is but she found it sometimes harder to pray for others or even to pray for yeah. himself what would you recommend for people because as part of the Lord's Prayer we see Jesus really setting the example for his disciples to ask for things and then um, and what would you suggest to people who find it difficult who perhaps never ever asked or they feel uh, they might not be worthy enough uh, to ask for themselves but what would you say as a, as a perhaps a tip or for a recommendation or a, a word of encouragement for them yeah i think sometimes i think kirsty mentioned last week that it can seem overwhelming because there's so many people you want to pray for and so many things that you want to happen that you, it's hard to know where to start yeah so what i try to do is to think of us if it's specifically for somebody else i i try and just bring them into my mind bring them into my heart and then I just say, Lord, I lift up this person to you. Yeah. Um, and then I just ask, I pray for blessings on them. If I, if I can't say something specific, I pray for blessings on them. And then more often than not, more specific words will come out along the way. Um, but also I do think sometimes it is harder to pray for yourself because there's a feeling that you're almost being a bit selfish, thinking mm -hmm. of yourself. but I think that God wants to hear our prayers right. and God wants to hear our needs. Yeah. And I, I, I read a, um, a saying on the, on the um, Bible in one year. I can't remember it exactly, but it was something like our prayers are the train tracks to God. So although God can hear our prayers, he can hear our, our needs he won't answer our prayers unless we open those train tracks up yeah. and that's what i try to think that that's what he wants us to do your prayer life has that changed in the last years or have you always been able to be quite intimate and be close to god or, or can you say something uh, or have you been on a journey has things changed in in in, in the past years for you yeah definitely in the past um probably year 15 months um so i did the alpha course right. at the beginning of last year and that definitely changed a lot for me i opened up my mind to different ways of praying to knowing i think i used to think that you had to pray in a specific way and you had to know certain words to pray but mm. now i know that you can pray like that but god just wants to hear you talking to him and you don't have to have specific ways of praying and, and that's changed a lot for me i think in, and i definitely feel the presence of the holy spirit a lot more thank you joelle that was really helpful helpful for me to hear as well and i hope really that other people will be really encouraged by that also to to ask for for things that are needed and and as you say i do believe as well that god god wants to hear and and if i look at my own children if they ask me for some food if they're hungry 
I would love to give it to them if I have it. So, so in that sense, thank you so much. That was really, really helpful. And thank you for joining us uh, thank today. Thank you very much. Great to have you in our service. Thank you. Well, I hope you found that helpful. And uh, thank you so much, Joelle, for doing that for us and for sharing that testimony with us. Um, this week we will continue with the prayer course in within our different connect groups. Um, we're going to start with session three. If you have missed session one and two, do not worry. Just do join in with your connect group if you're part of a group. Um, if um, if you want to be part of a group, please do come to the office. We will gladly help you. Or for any other queries you have. Uh, we're also meeting together through prayer on the WhatsApp. And, um, and if you want to join in on those groups as well, just contact the office and we will gladly help you further. Thank you so much. Just to explain as well what will happen in the weeks coming. Next week we will have a focus on intercession. I again will interview someone else from our church community uh, regarding the experience that um, that person will have on intercession. We will look at prayer spirituality and that is something that Alex will lead us into. She will do one session. It's a session that she will run instead of the prayer course and those videos will be uploaded as well on our website and you can follow that. And then we continue with the prayer course. We look at difficult questions such as unanswered prayer. How do we deal with that? We will look at contemplation. Uh, we will look at listening. How do we hear God's voice? And finally, we will look also at spiritual battle, the engagement of how, um, how do we deal with evil. Coming back. The Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Dear Father Lord, may we find your joy even in the midst of our trials. We pray that you would teach us what it means to see beyond our troubles, knowing that you are with us. Even so, Lord God, we see the challenges those around us are facing. We ask you to intervene, to be with those who are in need, to prompt us to participate with you as you care for your people, and most of all, to restore creation and make all things new. We pray that we would not be anxious, but that you would give us your peace let us live differently in the midst of trial so that the world might see you in us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, your Son, Jesus Christ, understood people's fear and pain before they spoke of them. We pray for those in hospital and confined to their homes and for the families and those affected by the COVID-19 pandemic. 
Surround the frightened with your tenderness. Give strength to those in pain. Hold the weak in your arms of love and give hope and patience to those who are recovering. We ask through the Saint Jesus Christ, our Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the leaders of government and the relief agencies that will be involved in aiding the communities. We pray for our homes, families, friends, and all whom we love. Also for those whose time is spent caring for others and for all the key workers at this difficult time. We pray for our church, our ministers and leaders and all those who preach and teach the gospel. May they all be supported as they learn to reach their communities in new ways. Strengthen and inspire them in their work. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. As we come to the end of our service, let us recall the words that St Paul wrote in his letter to the Ephesians. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we could ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations for ever and ever. And a final blessing. May the road rise to meet you. May the wind be always at your back. May the sun shine warm upon your fields. And until we meet again, may God hold you in the palm of his hand. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit 
be with each and every one of us this day and forevermore. Amen.